Hello and welcome to Transition Day. My name is Adam Dunn and I am blessed to be the head of the middle school here at King's. Normally, we'd be meeting in person in the theatre just after your child's special day had started. However, as we know, 2020 is no normal year and since we do not have an appropriate space for so many adults to congregate together whilst adhering to COVID-19 social distancing restrictions, we felt that a video would be a fitting way to enable you to meet the middle school leadership team and for you to hear some important information about middle school life. Today, I speak to you as not only head of middle school, but also as someone with a wealth of experience regarding year six. Prior to moving into this role, I had spent many years as a year six pastoral teacher. I have also had the experience of what it is like to be a dad of a beautiful year six girl. And a couple of years ago, my son was part of the year six cohort too. I remember when he got home after transition day and he said, Dad, I don't want a summer holiday this year. I just want to start year six straight away. It's like, you crazy son. It gladdens my heart to also be able to tell you that his enthusiasm did not waver. We were laying in bed together at the end of his year six journey and he told me that he did not want year six to end, that he wanted it to go on forever because it had been the best year of his life. Now, enough about my own son. To help explain what, I've, what I have learned about year sixes over the last two decades, I want to start off by talking to you about the growth and the development of a bird and look at what we can learn from our feathered friends. I used to think that birds hatched, chilled out for a while in their nest, getting a good feed, and once their parents were sick of them, they got kicked out and flew gracefully into adulthood. So basically, baby bird to big bird with a click of the fingers. Well, there are actually a few steps in between and there are specific names. Baby bird and big bird, surprisingly, are neither of them. When a bird is born, it is called a hatchling. It is naked and it is blind. It requires warmth and needs feeding every 15 minutes. It needs constant nurturing, similar to a child who has not started school and is completely dependent on its parents. During the next stage of development, it is referred to as a nestling. The nestling can open its eyes as it grows feathers and begins to move around the nest and interact with its siblings. The bird still requires nurturing, but some of what it needs will come from its nestmates. The nestling is like a junior school child who still depends on its parents, but also depends on their teacher as they begin to be aware that there is actually a world outside of the nest. The fledgling is next and it is deeply curious. It wants to explore the world and leave the nest, but it can't actually fly. However, this does not stop it from trying. On exiting the nest, its first attempt will end in crash landings, but it will use its developing wings to enable somewhat of a glide rather than a plummet. Each failed attempt to leave the nest, they learn more about their wings and how to use them. Once on the ground, they will hop on the floor and call for food their parents will begin to deny them food. Instead, their parents will begin to show them how to find food themselves and teach them what, it, what is good for them to eat. They can sometimes spend days trying to hop back up to their nest and can obviously be left in a vulnerable position. The parents help them to recognize danger and make loud noises when danger is present so that the fledgling can avoid the danger and remain safe. Here, we have a perfect blend of nurture and nature. The adult bird is taking care of their fledgling by supporting and teaching, but they are not doing things for them and not saving them. The fledgling is like our middle school student, a child who desperately wants to spread their wings in the search of independence, but still depends on their parent for so many things. A child who actually needs their parent to teach them and support them in the worldly challenges that will present, but should not be saved from situations or have things done for them. If an adult bird tried to catch their fledgling every time it was about to hit the ground, then it would never learn to use its wings and fly. The middle school at King's provides our students with the perfect blend of dependence and independence. Students spend two thirds of their week with a pastoral teacher in year six who teaches them mathematics, English and Hass, as well as our God Stuff and Wellbeing unit. A teacher that they can depend on who will care and support them as they develop a strong relationship and connection throughout the year. Yet, yeah, 
They also get the independence that comes with their own personalised timetable, which tells them where and when they have to be at various specialist subjects with various specialist teachers in subject specific locations throughout the school. Now, the final stage before a bird becomes an adult is the juvenile bird. It no longer requires nurture. It is as big as an adult bird and can fly just as well. The juvenile is like a senior school student preparing for all that nature offers, the workforce and total independence. An interesting tip for the senior school years and one that is extremely relevant for me with my year 11 daughter at the moment is that even though the juvenile bird is efficient at finding food and eating on their own, they can still beg their parents for food. A bird goes from a fledgling to a juvenile in approximately a month. While this process, process takes a lot longer for humans, the growth that occurs over the course of year six is absolutely astounding both physically, emotionally, and mentally. The students see this growth and are so proud of themselves. Celebrate this growth with them as you embrace the journey. Existing children at King's find it so exciting when their cohort increases and eagerly welcome the new faces. Children new to King's quickly learn what it is to be a King's student and rise to the challenge and expectations. Speaking from experience, by camp, which will be taking place in week four of term one, Teachers can't tell who is new to Kings compared to children who have been attending here for over six years. So, what can you do to help your fledgling and provide a perfect balance of nurture versus nature or dependence versus independence? Support, don't save. Remember sometimes the falls are necessary for growth. Give them roles and responsibilities around the house to help with establishing some independence. Help them to recognise dangers, but don't prevent them from taking healthy risks. Take an interest in all that they do. Even when it seems like they don't want you to, deep down they do and will be hurt if you don't. Keep calm and provide them with a level-headed perspective. Don't get dragged into their big emotions and don't portray any of your emotion onto them. After all, you are the adult. Finally, they are never too old for a kiss and a cuddle and to be told that they are loved and are special. Physical touch, affection, and words of affirmation are still so important. While raising your child is primarily your responsibility, we want to work in partnership with you. Dialogue with your child regularly about how things are really going and communicate with us straight away if you discover they are struggling and if support is required. If you haven't already, work out the best time to have these open chats with your child. For my son and I, it is definitely in bed at the end of the day after I've read to him, sang our special song and done our nightly prayers. Another time he regular, regularly opens up is on the long drive to soccer games as we sit side by side without the pressure of eye contact. The middle school has been specifically designed to cater for this stage of adolescence and while your child's pastoral teacher will be your child's rock and your first port of call as soon as you have any questions or concerns, we have a team of people who are in place to give our students the support they need and they will introduce themselves to you now. Welcome to Middle School. It's so great to have you come and join us and we are really looking forward to getting to know you and your child a bit better. Well, my name is Vicki Jones and I am the Middle School Leader of Spiritual Formation and Wellbeing. And one of the things that we love here at King's is building relationships with others. We have an amazing pastoral line. Your child every single day will do a pastoral lesson with their pastoral teacher. We have been part of a relational school study and we came out, even though we are a large school, we actually came out as if we were a small school based on our relationships. And when they looked at our school and looked at all of the data, the only thing that they could put it down to our amazing results of building relationships was that we have this pastoral line. We hold it really dearly, we think it's really amazing and we know that your kids will love having pastoral each day. Well, there's a few things that we always do in our pastoral line and that is that we always do something to do with Christian living. Um, we are built, our school is built on a vision of faith and that is very important to us and that is part of every day. Also in that pastoral line, once a week we meet together as a chapel and your child as a year six is going to gather together with the year sevens. We do a year six, seven chapel and it's often a highlight of the week. Other things that they are going to do in the week will be just building community in their class. 
Uh, they will also celebrate all the good things that happen as well. We also do some well-being teaching and we also do some faith studies teaching all in that week. So don't forget to ask your child, what did you do in pastoral today? The other last thing that I want to tell you about is the way that we start our year here at Kings in the Middle School. And we start it with two days, which are for your child to spend with their class and with their pastoral teacher. So before they go to any specialist classes, before they meet any other teachers, we have two days which are specially designed to build community, to build connection and for your child to know that they matter here at King's. Hi, I'm Jack Kiriakou, the Year 6 to 9 Boys Coordinator at King's, and this is Katina Sarantidis, the Year 6 to 9 Girls Coordinator. We will journey through the next four years of middle school with your children, and we work closely with pastoral teachers, subject teachers, school chaplains, school leadership, and other agencies when required. We are part of the middle school management team, and we work closely with our head of school, Mr. Adam Dunn. We're part of a team that provides extra support, care and guidance, as well as accountability for the students in our school. And we're also middle school teachers too. Our key focus is to support the students with their social, academic, behavioural and spiritual needs. The first port of call will always be your child's pastoral teacher, but we're also available for support as well. We endeavour to help your children embrace the school Fisher principles by following the levels of our teaching responsible behaviours policy. If a behavioural intervention is needed, we step in once a class teacher has tried different ways to support and redirect a student's choices. And if unsuccessful, we may need to step in to help get a student back on track. This might require a restorative conversation. We call these warm conversations and they're aimed at helping students identify their actions, their effects on themselves and others, and ways of moving forward with positive outcomes. We see our role as helping young students learn from their mistakes helping them to cultivate responsibility and learning and growing through their experiences with our guidance. In our roles, we spend a lot of time visiting classrooms and out in the schoolyard, talking and getting to know the students. We are always there to get alongside and provide a person to chat to, share a worry with, help with planning for schoolwork or subjects, navigate friendships and talk about how Jesus can help us in our lives. Even though we are not trained counsellors, we are there for both you and your children if help is needed. You may hear from us from time to time, usually by sector or maybe even a phone call. This may be due to a consequence for a type of behaviour, for example, if they're not wearing the correct uniform. Um, we may inform you that we've had a catch-up chat with your child. We're confident that together, as part of a team, we can help guide your children through their middle years of schooling. Yours in Christ, Jack Kiriakou and Katina. P.S. If you need to communicate with us, the quickest way is always by email. Bye. Hi, my name's Brilma Mordek and I have the incredible privilege of working in student diversity. And student diversity does many, many things, but essentially we're here to support children. And the way we do that is to help build strategies and a toolbox of strategies that they can develop as they move through middle school and into senior school. We work really closely with teachers um, in, in developing accommodations and adjustments and support systems so that your child can be successful in the classroom. So your first point of call, if you have a concern around your child's progress um, in the middle school, is to contact your pastoral teacher. We are always available. We are always um, really happy to, to stop and um, chat and ring and uh, have those conversations so that your child can be in the best space that they can. Other things that we do, it might be providing a safe spot for children because sometimes being out in the courtyard or out at lunchtime is actually really tricky for some students and, and developing those social skills are really important to enable them to do that well. It might be organisation, so some students, their desk might be a complete and utter mess and chaos or their lockers might be like that. And so helping students develop organisational skills is another way of supporting children to be successful and supporting them to manage the demands of assignments and timelines in middle school. Um, we do a lot in terms of um, offering some programs and intervention to assist children and working one-on-one -on -one with children. 
every child is different, so their programs are going to look different. And um, rest assured that we have an incredible team around your children. We have their pastoral teachers, we have the girls and boys coordinator, we, we have the chaplains, and it is an amazing school um, to be part of that community and to be supported in a holistic team. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to ring me or email me. I am happy to um, get in contact at any time. Hi, my name is Jason Lipper. I'm one of the chaplains here at King's and wanted to welcome you to the King's community uh, and into uh, middle school. So one of the adages that we really believe in is this idea that it takes a village to raise a child. And um, we think that that is really important, that you guys are needing just as much support and we're gonna need your support on this journey together. And we're, we're looking forward to really answering that question of what does it take to help our young people thrive? And so for my role, it's really threefold, um, which is around supporting the Faith Studies Program, um, two is, is around providing some past, pastoral care, and third is, is the service learning. So let me talk first about um, our Faith Studies Program. So twice a week in, in our pastoral lesson, they'll have a pastoral lesson each day, but twice a week they'll be doing Faith Studies and exploring the idea of what it is to be a Christian. And on um, a third of that, um, on the third lesson, they'll also have a chapel where six and sevens get together and, and, and worship together and hear about um, uh, Christian ideas in that space. And that's really a hallmark of who we are as kings, that every day they have a pastoral lesson and they get to explore the idea of faith. And we think that that's an important, important place. Second, we talked about that idea of pastoral care. We really recognise, like I said, that, that idea of uh, takes a village, that we want to support, support you and that you're needing support um, through life together. We're going to be in a relationship together in some ways from six years now. And so we recognise there's going to be positive and awesome times, but there's going to be tough times. And, and that obviously extends way past the classroom. So we, my role is to extend that um, pastoral care to families for you, but also to your kids um, and to those students. Just wherever they are going and how they're going through life. Um, I quite often work with some young people one-on-one -on -one and, and working through some of the difficulties that come with, with teenage life. Um, and third is around this idea of service learning. And so this might be a new term to you, I'm not sure, but, but we recognise that in what it takes for humans to thrive, one of those things is, is actually giving. Giving of ourselves is a really important thing of how we thrive is actually that we're altruistic, that we're looking to help others. And so within that, we've got a whole bunch of different ways and programs that we, that starts hopefully in the home that, we, that the, the students are coming back with the idea that they need to be an integral, integral part of their family and looking to serve at home, which hopefully that's good news to you, but also into our wider community. So that we've got, um, connections with West Care and Baptist Care in town where we do um, Aboriginal Awareness Program and, and work with homeless people in there but we've also got connection with Cambodia which is um, through Transform Cambodia where we support a learning centre and further on in the journey they're able to even do um, a visit and, and learn more about Cambodia and, and giving of themselves. You know, there's, there's that thing about thriving, I think is really important. You know, there's been a lot of studies lately talking about that. And, and one of those other things that we think is really important is actually how what builds resilience and thriving is actually thankfulness. And so we're really wanting, we think that that covers all those three things, that we are thankful for our homes, we are thankful for the things that come in our life, but we actually build a practice of thankfulness. There's actually an opportunity for you to be part of the King's community as well, in that we are having a parents' prayer group that's meeting on Monday mornings at 8.45. So if that's something that um, you feel passionate about and love to pray for us as a community, Mondays um, are the way that you could actually participate and be a part of who we are. Thank you so much for investing the time into meeting our middle school leadership team and hearing a bit about middle school life. I would encourage you to debrief, debrief with your child after transition. You could ask them something that they have found out about their new teacher, a new relationship that was built, something they discovered about the school, their highlight of the day and what they are most looking forward to about next year. Well, it is goodbye from me for now and I look forward to seeing you in person and hearing how your child is settling into middle school life soon.